It's Wednesday, June the 1st. Lake level is right at 917. It looks like they started uh, generating quite a bit of water last night and into today. It actually came up uh, almost a foot, you know, almost two foot, you know, a little over a foot and a half it came up now starting to go back down. We didn't get near the rain that was forecasted or did we get it around us, but I mean that helped out a bunch, that water coming up, and I'll get into that in a little bit when I talk about fishing up in the rivers, but water came up into the bushes, so that's that's been helping. Water temperature is about 75 to, oh, anywhere from 73, 77 degrees, depends where you go. But that's helping a bunch too. That's got the bait really active first couple hours of the morning. And a lot of different things going on. I guess I'll start out with what we did today. Uh, we started out on some gravel flats. It seems like there's a lot of shad on the gravel flats, especially early. They're real shallow and several different ways to catch them fish. There'll be fish kind of breaking all over the place. We're having a, a little bit of a time trying to catch those fish. They're, a lot of times they're two casts away, but what seems to be working the most consistent, as we talked about the last couple weeks, is a little underspin or a swim bait. And this, the bait will be busting anywhere from two foot out as deep as 25 or 30 in the morning. They seem to be keying on the gravel. And what we've been throwing is a, either a Kitek, or this is a, one that uh, Knight's Custom Bait makes. This has got a little 2.8 Kitek on an underspin. Another one I've got is one that Pig Sticker makes. I've got a, a three and a half inch swim bait on it. I don't think it matters what brand, and you don't even have to have the fish head. Uh, seems like you've just cast it out. Real slow retrieve, you can catch some of those fish, but a lot of those fish seem to be smaller. Now, the way we got into bigger fish today was I went to a lot of the kind of standard places where the fish should be this time of year, the post-spawn fish. They're out off of the deeper channel swings, bluff ends. Now, in those areas, we didn't see very many schooling fish. There was some bait that we could see some on the graph, some on the surface. But we caught them on topwater baits, on walking baits like a, a Strike King Sexy Dog, a, a jointed redfin, cotton cordell redfin. Really didn't seem to matter what, well I guess it did make a little bit of difference what color. When, if we had a little bit of sunshine, the baits that had a little chrome on them seemed to work the best. Now when it was all overcast and cloudy, like on the jointed redfin, Smokey Joe seem to work the best. Now you can also get the Smoky Joe on a chrome and black or chrome and blue. And I talked to the guys at Sportsman Factory Outlet today. They've got these on 15% off on the Cotton Cordell Redfins. Just tell them that you heard it on my video and they'll give you 15% off. But these are working real good. And what we're doing, a lot of times I'm setting the boat in 50, 60 foot of water. And I'm throwing these over the submerged timber just outside of the spawning pockets where there's a, a channel swing that comes up against the point or to be like the, the main lake point leading into a spawning pocket. What them fish do is after they get done spawning, they come out over that deep water. They don't necessarily go deep. They seem to hang out there for two or three weeks and just kind of rest up. And now with that shad spawn going on, uh, the fish can be pretty active out there. And we caught them. You know, after we left the fish that were on the gravel flats, we probably never went much more than 15 minutes without a bite for the next four or five hours. We caught a combination of large mouths, uh, Kentuckys, and a few small mouths, and even a few white bass. Now, there's been a lot of white bass up on them gravel flats. Uh, if you, the problem is with them, when they come up busting, they don't seem to stay up too long, and they'll be a cast length away one minute, and then they'll be several thousand yards away in a couple minutes they don't see you know you can you can try to chase them i haven't had very much luck chasing either the whites or the kentuckys that are chasing them shad on the open flats my best deal has been getting up over the deeper water where i feel them fish are living in those trees and we're pulling them up out of the timber now it's not working every place on the lake you got to have clear water you know where i'm doing this i've got visibility anywhere from 8 to 15 foot. Kimberling City area down at the dam, you know, the water's still pretty stained. 
So it seems like the top water bite's not near as good. It seems like from Baxter on up to Eagle Rock, it's got some of the best looking water for, for top water. Now with that water coming up, especially with the busy weekend, I went up in the river arms. One day I went way up to James, another day I went uh, way up in the Long Creek. I had a couple days up in each arm. But with the water coming up a little bit, the fish got up into the bushes. Uh, they're getting on a lot of the lay downs and it seemed like the best areas were the main river. I could get back in the pockets and not do as well, but we caught them on a combination of things. If I was flipping, we caught them on a Texas rigged uh, beaver with a, a quarter ounce head. Uh, you could do the same thing with a, a Texas rigged baby brush on. And another thing I like to do quite a bit, I like to save my old jigs. When the skirts get all wore out, this is a Snowden pig sticker jig. And when your skirts get all wore out, I just pull them off. And this is a 3.5 beaver. I'll just rig it up right on the jig head that way. You know, it's kind of the same thing as a Texas rig. Uh, but this way you don't have to put the bullet weight or anything on. You can flip it right into the, the thickest cover. Now when we was up in the river arms, we also had a good early bite. We caught some fish on a whopper plopper fish on a buzzbait and a square bill crankbait. Now a lot of the uh, buzzbait fish and the whopper plopper fish were, were up in the river on the real flat banks that had isolated buck brush and stuff around them. Seemed like after about 8.30 or 9 o'clock that bite slowed down and then we picked up the flipping sticks and started fishing the main river channel swings anywhere from 2 feet out to as deeper as 7 or 8 feet. And on a buzzbait, what I like to throw, uh, you know, I've been taking the skirts off my buzzbait. I can throw the bait a lot further that way. And I've been using a, a Zoom Horny Toad as a trailer on it. And then I've got an owner, it's a, like a flexible trailer hook. And it seems like I can throw this bait twice as far without the skirt on it. And you don't have to get any backlashes. And I'm with this... Uh, Horny toad on there, it allows you, it helps the bait float a little bit so you can work the bait a little bit slower and keep it up on top. And I'm using a Crocker Gator buzz bait. You'll notice it's got a real flat head it's where it planes. That actually helps the bait stay up on top where you can work it slow. And it's kind of got a built in clacker. If you want it to clack, you just bend the wire down to where it clacks the head. If you don't want it clacking, sometimes you want a little bit more subtle presentation. Just pull it away. But pretty much all the fish that we caught up in the rivers between flipping and on the buzz bait and uh, whopper plopper were all large mouths. You know, no big fish, but good solid, you know, two and a quarter to, you know, three pound fish. And, you know, we had several of them. So that's one, you know, right now a guy can kind of fish however he likes to. If you want to go to the river arms, you can fish shallow. And also up in the river arms, there's a structure bite. You know, with a deep crankbait with like a Strike King 6XD. I still haven't got a very good bottom bite with like a football jig or a Carolina rig or a wobble head. Uh, it still seems to be moving baits even out there on the structure. The deeper crankbait's working good. Another thing I didn't talk about much is the, just the straight swim bait too. The swim bait will work up in the river arms. Kind of find out what depth the fish are at and drop it down. And I'm throwing anywhere from a 3 8 to a half ounce. Anywhere from a, you know, on the, on the head weight and the bait size, anywhere from a three and a half to a four and a half inch bait on the swim bait. Uh, you know, the top water bite, you know, it's been ideal conditions here the last few days because we've had overcast every day. But even without the clouds, you know, that top water bite will hang around till about nine o'clock in the morning. Some days they'll bite it throughout the day. If you can get a little bit of a breeze or chop on the water, that seems to help. But like I said, the main thing I'm keying on on the top water bite is pretty much the majority of its main lake, or if I'm in a creek, it's uh, the deeper creeks that have got real good, you know, real good depth on one side where a channel comes up against a flatter point, and they're suspended out there in the pole timber as well as the cedar trees. Uh, like I say, boat traffic was a little crazy this weekend, but when I got into the river arms, Heck, I didn't see anybody, not even hardly any fishing boats. You pretty much had it to yourself. So if you want to get away from the boat traffic this time of year, go to the, the river arms. 
And also something I didn't even mention too, up in the river arms, we also caught them on square bills. Uh, Strike King 1.5 and a, uh, a 4S, which is a square bill, a series 4. And it seemed like chartreuse sexy shad. And I was throwing this if I'd see some shad come up or little groups of shad. Also, if there were some isolated stumps were out in five or six foot of water where the boat would be setting while I was flipping. Just kind of parallel the bank with a crankbait. But multiple different ways to catch fish. Seems like the, the shad are really getting active. You know, just a lot more things starting to happen. So until next week, uh, good luck, good fishing.